Today is Friday, September the 15th, 2023. Welcome to episode 61 of Rural Reliance with Katie Cup. I'm Julia. And I'm Erin. And we are a small homestead family who focus on building self-dependence and self-reliance through debt-free living, homesteading, and anything else we can do. We try to merge it all together and come out with some sort of product that's going to work for us. Yeah. This is the easiest way to say it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, while we know we're never going to be fully self, you know, dependent. We would love to be 90%. 90%. Our goal is like 75, 80. Yeah. That's where we're yeah. shooting for, but we're always looking to increase our self reliance by a half of a percent, a tenth of a percent every day to make strides in the right direction. That's always the goal keep moving forward and today we want to talk about something that's fresh on our minds fresh on our minds and it's something we've mentioned a lot but I'm sure a lot of people look at us and they're like why <laughs> why did they why did they focus so much on this so yes and what we're going to talk about is winter squash a lot a lot of winter squash. What? Why we put half the gar- of our garden in winter squash, pumpkins, and winter squash. Yes. And this week we had our video on YouTube come out showing our squash, pumpkin, uh, trumpuccino, if you don't consider them a winter squash, um, haul, basically. Absolutely. And we really, you know, I guess let's talk about our garden harvest first. So this yep. year we've had a really good garden harvest. Um, and for us, we have a bit of a different garden philosophy. We um, have very strongly shifted towards focusing on what we eat. Instead of what Aaron wants to th- try because it looks unique. That's been a real big problem. And I get stuck trying to figure out how to cook it. Um, I would say something like we will try a few things. We tried the eggplant. Yeah, that... Um... Jack, I've survived a podcast, kept we raving about. Uh, yeah. If I, I can't I'm not a fan of that. saute it, if I can't saute it, it's not, it's, it's just not for us. Like, if it can't be sauteed in a little bit of butter, a little bit of fat, a little bit of seasoning, and tastes good, we don't want it. No, no. That's like our main way yeah, to cook definitely. most things in our garden, sauteed or roasted with seasoning and to eat it. So, we really focus on what we eat. We also have a very hands-off approach when we can to our yes. garden. Um, we really developed that this year. Really focused on that this year. We don't... We do a little bit of fertilizer. To begin with. And I, I did it once this year. Afterwards, yeah. And we sort of maintain and keep the weeds away. and Until they take... Until the plants can kind of manage mm-hmm. on their own. And... Um, any bugs like potato bugs we, we this year we didn't have to do anything even for those but sometimes we would um diatomaceous, diatomaceous earth. earth or take a broom that's what i was gonna say most of the time Aaron would just stomp them. go out there with the broom and knock them down <laughs> yep yep <laughs> and more often than not that's what we would do mm-hmm. so we have a very hands-off approach to a lot of things we want everything to be as easy as possible on our homestead as simple even though it might not seem simple, we do try to focus on that. We don't want to yeah. spend 20 hours, 30 right. hours. Because we, we try to do so much. I mean, it's what it is. We have to set it up sort of like an automation. You can think of it as to maintain itself as much as it can. So with this, we had a very good harvest this year. We have been Amazing. very, very pleased. Um, we're about to see how many potatoes we actually ended up with. The Aaron's going to be digging those up here soon. Yes. Um, we're going to start pulling a few sweet potatoes because we're ready to have roasted sweet potatoes and squash because we have squash. Yeah, and I mean, any any day, I mean, it could start. I mean, we can, we've can we had it any time from this time in September to December when the first freeze happens. Yep. So we, we, we don't have enough covers to cover everything mm, in our garden. There's just no way. No. Like there's no way we could cover 
everything and, we have. And our sweet potatoes, where they're in bags, they're above ground, so they wouldn't make it anyway. So we always have to make sure we get those out beforehand. So this is us testing to see how they've came along. Let's see if we're, we can start pulling some to start getting those ready. We don't want to pull too much because we, we're like in the middle of harvesting <laughs> right now. There's so much to put up in process at the moment that uh, somebody here is wearing thin. Um, I'm, I'm a little drained, but <laughs> we're dealing with it. We're doing yeah. the thing we got to get done. Right. And it's so important that I put this away because saving our harvest and making the most out of it because we've put, you know, while not a lot of work into it, we have worked for it. We've done a lot with it. And I feel really good about how well we've done so far. Um, we've lost a few things. You always lose a couple of tomatoes and it never fails. Yeah. Like, especially the Romas towards the end, they were small. They were on the smaller side and they were the ones that like, even before they fully ripen, cause we pick at blush. Um, we don't pick, but we don't pick when they're red on the vine. So we pick a blush and we would get some that would rotten before we could before they were fully ripened and that's just part of the game you you can't help that a few cucumbers always get lost in the mess of cucumber yeah. vines even though our vines didn't we they were um they were amazing they were amazing they got taken by deer but we still got enough to get um 12 half pints five pints and eight pints of relish so we yeah. got pickles and relish enough for a year and a half for the year and yeah i mean so we feel really good about that oh, yeah anything i get to be able to put away is, is is always amazing and our peppers are coming on like gangbusters all mm. of a sudden after the deer demolished them like we've probably got 200 peppers on those little bitty plants yes we're, at least we're getting ready to have a lot of cayennes um, which we feel good we're they're yes. going straight in honey Honey and garlic, like they're straight in the honey and garlic. That's the plan for this. Why we, but that's why we chose to raise them. Mm -hmm. And then, whenever I bake chicken, my plan is to put that on some cooked chicken. I could just imagine. Mm -hmm. I love spicy honey. Like it's gonna be so good. Um, just to drizzle a little bit on spicy chicken with rice. It's oh yeah, be amazing. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Not cooking it so it doesn't lose its medicinal properties, but eating it in a way that we will enjoy. Yeah. It would be palatable. So it's really important that we start putting where up harvest. We have been going really heavy. Our summer squash, I put away more than we have ever even thought to grow. Yeah, and we still have more to freeze dry that we're trying to get through. Plus, we've picked one or two here within the past couple of weeks that we still need to process yes. and get put up. We're getting about a bucket of food from our garden. Or half we were, bucket. We were getting a bucket every day. Now we're about to every other day, every, right? Eh, eh, half a bucket every every other day would probably be good. Which is about a gallon. Mm. About a gallon of food every other day from our garden. Bes besides what our main topic today. Yes, besides <laughs> our summer squash. Our winter squash. Well, yeah. So the other thing to think about is we didn't do this this year, but you can extend your growing season. You can use frost covers. We have tried this. I would say for us, frost covers have not been super successful. No, no, it, 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 it definitely hasn't. We've it, not had an extension of our growing season. If anything, it's killed everything we've tried to do. Well, yeah, it's been too hard of freezes always um, to even get to, for the frost. Like we're talking in the twenties, you know, um, at thirty, you know, it's not the thirty-two to thirty-six when you might have a frost. It's it's a hard freeze. And typically, we can't do anything yeah. at that point. We've tried the hoop. That didn't really work out for us very well. And I mean, it's just been very hard to act for us to extend so we're hoping to extend by bringing in um the cracky method did i say mm -hmm. that right the cracky method indoors in our canning room so we can have some fresh lettuce mostly spinach would be one that yeah. i would really want to be able to grow indoors all year round and have something fresh throughout the year um 
and even in the really cold times. We're not ready to set that up at this point, but that is coming in the next couple yeah, of months. And then we'll have cold frames in the future as we'll, well to here. sort of, you know, supplement some food a little past some of these hard freezes or, you know, past past these soft freezes. <laughs> and we're really hoping it helps cut soy. That yes. is a really, I mean. It, it usually survives until we hit like a, like zero or five degree <laughs> that that stuff looked beautiful mm. at like negatives and then yeah. but once it came out i mean you couldn't have t- when you looked at it outside it you wouldn't have thought oh i know it, it was beautifully preserved until it started warming up and then you saw that it, it got bit um so we're really hoping that we can utilize that tut soy to really extend uh, and, the lettuce season and that's something we usually do is try to extend it to the last possible moment yes and and also to grow fall gardens we like turnips um rutabaga things Mm -hmm. like that squash i mean we do have a few fall crops we just didn't plant like later we for everything we had going on this year we didn't have time to get a fall garden in but our summer garden definitely made up for it. it did it did and we started the things we knew we would have to harvest in the fall in the spring. So you have your exactly. potatoes, your sweet potatoes. And the th- other things that are, we're talking about today are squash and pumpkins. So we have these things that have very long growing seasons. They need time to grow, to mature, to get to readiness. And we made sure we got those things that we knew we wanted, we knew we needed into the ground as soon as possible. Yeah, and, and a lot of it has to do with the first freeze you know we have sometimes tried to push the limits on that a few times and it's backfired on us you know or even the last freeze the last freeze has backfired on us more often than not it has in the spring yeah because we would try to push it to march and and one hits april one hits may we're we were planted squash like four times one year because it hit every single time so we have learned to be patient, even though I want to get this stuff in the ground, I can't. So it's it's just one of yeah. the things we really focus on. And, and it's not for everybody doing an extended garden. Mm-mm. You know, a, a lot of people around us especially, by the end of July, they're done. You could tell. The gardens are gone. Gardens are gone. Gone. Removed, gone, nothing left. We always at least go to end of August. Yes. On our gardens. Try. Uh, try go as far as we can. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we'll even try to plant, you know, some summer squash late in. Eight balls. Some eight balls. Like, you know, at the end of um, July to try to get in right before in september if we don't have a freeze you know it It, has such a short time frame it's 35 days and you can get several really good sized eight balls off of it that it's and it's worth it i mean to have more food production to extend your growing season i mean you have to take advantage of every day you can from a growing season standpoint because if it's given to us we've got to take advantage of it absolutely um so we try to extend it, and we usually do. This year, we did not get to it. I would say this year has been. We've actually had a few really rough years trying to get to the, <laughs> trying to get our fall garden out, um, because we do like the fall vegetables are probably our favorite. Yeah, we we are more. We like the turnips. We like the rutabagas. We like the winter squash, pumpkins. You know that is a large part of our day to day meals: sweet potatoes. You know, anyways, so it's something we, you know, really push hard at. We do. So we always try to put our effort and energy where we want to focus. But I would say our biggest focus ever since we first started trying to garden, and I say trying because when we first started, we were not doing very good at this. No. um, Has always been on winter squash. Yes. So I love butternut squash it is one of my all-time favorites Aaron had you had butternut squash mm-hmm. yeah I have, I have. so I don't think he liked it as much until I roasted it with yeah. all the other vegetables and then oh. ever since then sweet potatoes 
with butternut squash, potatoes, with potatoes and rutabaga, and carrots. Oh, gosh, that sounds so good. <laughs> Oil and a seasoning. Yep. All you do. Yep. All you do to it, throw it in and fix it. He actually made one, and I was missing an ingredient. He's like, it was good, but it something wasn't quite it right. Didn't have sweet potatoes. It didn't have sweet potatoes. But I had a squash I needed to use. I had a winter squash. It was from the volunteer plant that we mm -hmm. had. And I wanted to get it used before I knew all the other squashes were getting close to being ready. And um, so I made it and he's like, something wasn't quite right with that. But it's okay. It was still very good. So other things that we have that grow, um, Aaron's actually gotten our um, berry production to really extend. And our gojis are starting to bloom again. Yeah, yeah. I am still picking blueberries in the middle of September. I, I, I mean... Today, I got like six or seven. Okay, that's still a bite of food. You know, I'm probably going to have four or five more total blueberries. Hey, the closer I can get to October, you know, maybe next year, I have more up until that point. You know, you never know. And like we said, the gojis, oh my gosh. Middle September, we, like, the first production has already sort of went by in the same spot it seems like we've we're... already got a gallon bag from yeah. these this little volunteer thing that came out of the ground two years ago yeah and we've not even picked them all no we're, because we can't get to them all we're missing, we're missing a lot too just because i'm picking it every other two to three days if i was picking it every day you know it's definitely a lot uh, but we're still getting, you know, a, a good crop every that. And right now, producing again, I, we've had these before up until December and January. January. And if nothing goes wrong again, we will still be picking goji berries by then. How many, how much do you think you get, like a cup? Half right now? A cup? Yeah. Um, we've had days where we're getting two to three cups. Probably a cup at the probably moment. A cup. And when we... That's a lot of gojis. Yes. And when we get, you know, deep into the winter time, I'm still getting probably a fourth of a cup, usually even then. It, it takes a lot to kill these things. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot. Now, I've okay, had snow on the ground picking these off before. They're not the best tasting thing in the world. No. no. But they're highly nutritious. And our goal is to, we have some dehydrated. And they do dehydrate. They take a very, they, very long time. And they dehydrate. taste a better than eating them fresh the goal is to actually freeze dry them and get them to a state where we can powder them and use them in other ways just like a little bit to get the nutritional value out of mm -hmm. them yeah yeah they're they're not my favorite it, it, it tastes like you're eating a pepper straight and not even a good one not a good no. one. <laughs> not a good pepper it's not no. like a it's, it's you it's, get the te like the you don't get the flavor of a pepper. You just get that the spice or odd, weird, yeah, like the weird part of the pepper taste. You don't get like the mingling between the pepper. It's just I now, know it's not our favorite. Now I'm curious: has anybody tried a black goji? We, we tried to grow them. We like tried to grow them three times. Do they taste any different? If they do, you know. Put it down in, in, in a comment if you're watching on YouTube or send us an email to let us know what you what you think, if there's any difference or if they taste better. And if they do, we'll try them again because we've, we've gotten it to kind of start but not actually take off. Yeah. And I'm really tempted to take the soil where we've grown <laughs> the red gojis and put them in a pot with the black goji yeah. seeds because it's worked really well. For the Greg, like it has worked yeah. crazy well. Those things are going gangbusters. But so, why do we focus so much on one particular thing? Why does it take up four rows in my garden? That doesn't seem like very much. Like four rows, oh, that's nothing. Four three rows. Three, three rows. Three. Sorry. I was like, wait a minute. Did we it have will another? be four rows next year. Yeah. Aaron doesn't know that, but this will be four rows next year. I'm, well, I'm we're not taking. We're taking tomatoes out of the main garden area and doing something else with them, which we'll talk about here in a future podcast video. And because we're doing that, we're going to open up some space. So mm -hmm. it makes sense for us to focus our efforts on having a whole row of butternut squash. Yeah. yeah. I'm, 
I want as much of that as I can get. So why do we put so much effort into this? There is there's so much good about a winter squash. You have its storing ability, which depending on what you get. Most most varieties though. I would look at your varieties. Make sure it's a long that's, story that's true. variety. Don't because, get one like um, like the pumpkins that you carve outside. They yeah. don't keep very long. No. Or the ones you have to cure that are the decorative things. They're you not don't going need to that do. Junk. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people feel like a garden's a beautiful place. They want the decorations. <sighs> it's not edible. We find beauty in what we can eat. Yeah. That's why we focus on what 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 is going to provide us sustenance now and in the future. Yeah. Um. So you get things that are going to store so, well. And, and a lot of this that the, when you think of winter squash, you think of storing capabilities, mm-hmm. because this is what a lot of people used to eat over the winters. You know, because hey. You don't usually grow anything in the winters. And, and like, I had something up here where it's talking about, you know, variety types of winter squash. Um, you know, anything from 4,000 to 10,000 years ago, um, you had uh, bananas, you had butternut squash, you had, like, this is the common names, you had zucchini, pumpkins. I mean, anything like that, this is how long this stuff has been around, you know, different varieties per se but those those in general types it is something that you know this is how a lot of people survived back in the day is eating this through the winter time absolutely now not only can you have great storage it's also going to give you an abundance of meat depending on your variety so your long necked squash like your butternuts the longer your neck the more meat you're going to have your blue hubbards are going to be very meaty in most cases and and the blue hubbards these th- these are more well more modern yeah, it, they came about in the mid 1800s uh, um, a lot of people call him the father of squash they invented a lot of of uh, different types but he invented um, the blue hubbard at that time he bred it yeah so I mean it's it's one that's been around you know for a couple of hundred years now and they get large, massively large. I see ours were actually kind of on the medium side. They were, but they were still heavy. They were still heavy. I know. <laughs> I know. I know how heavy every Here, single carry squash. carry this one over to the pile. Every single squash was. I don't know how I got stuck being the gopher. He's like, well, you didn't get over here. He didn't ask. He did not ask. I picked him. <laughs> but I had to go for them. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> I think I should have picked him, and he go for them. But we'll talk about that later. So you get so much meat from them. You Mm. really can. You take the seeds out and you get all that meat from them. And it's just so, they're they're just so easy. Mm. They really are. You can get so much food from them. And if you're watching your proportions, you're watching how you do them, you can make a lot of meals from one squash. Like a ton of meals from one squash. Like like this is something you can use to extend your, your, you know, your food uh, in your house is by, you know, splitting these out into multiple meals, you know, whether you're making soups out of them or, um, you know, it's your, it's your main side. Uh, Muffins. Muffins. uh, Pancakes. Gosh, there's so much you can do with them. They're so versatile. They are. They're very versatile. And they're just, I mean, it's just so easy to use them. It is. Pies. I mean, and they all kind of have similar flavors, but they don't. No. So (laughs) they're going to have the same basic taste, but I will tell you Mm. that a banana could taste different from a butternut squash. Yeah. And like, you know. And the textures can be different. That's what I was getting trying to get to. The texture is different from one type to another. So you might find types that you don't like. You know? I will tell you, I'm not terribly fond of the trompuccino texture. It is not my favorite. I'm hoping if I try mashing it like mm. I did the banana, because we weren't fond of the banana either. That's true. I added flour. I had to oh. add a little bit of flour to oh, it. That was amazing. I'm really wondering if I make it into like a squash cake, kind of like a 
potato cake and then like fry it a little bit if that will help the texture for me because I I know Erin thought I was nuts when I said I added flour. I was like, you did what? I <laughs> thought she ruined it. <laughs> but I actually took it and oh. I made it taste better than any yeah. banana squash we'd ever had. Yeah, it was amazing. It was so good. The baby wouldn't eat it because uh, she was being picky, yeah. but it was really good. Any kind of different texture, she's just like spits it out <laughs> <laughs> until like the next time we try then she'll gobble it up it, um, it's just one of those things. but let's, let's talk about the trappuccinos now so even though we said we're not a huge fan of them the texture yes they are amazing survival food they are they stay and they're one that gives you time to process it that yes. is why another thing we like winter squash for it gives I'm going to process it because there's no way we're going to eat all this this fall. Like, yeah. there, there's just no way. There's so much. But we grew enough in case we get a bad harvest next year. Mm -hmm. Goal here is to buy myself a couple of weeks, <laughs> a couple, like a month or two, to work through processing it because that, that's really the goal here. We want time, and it gives me a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. And, and those, I mean, they're so prolific growing. We had a few last year. I think we were like six or seven. Mm -hmm. This year, I think we got like 20 or 30. Yeah, and we still got quite a few to pick in the garden. Even though you watched the garden harvest, we still have a few things left that weren't ready the other day that we still need to pick. I think one of those trappuccinos, I'm really tempted to weigh it. That thing weighs probably 15 to 20 pounds. It was, I could carry, I was able to get like 10 in one yeah. round. That one only got three. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't that heavy. And it is all, and that's the other thing I like about it, the whole neck is meat. Mm -hmm. The whole neck is that squash meat. So I can't, we're not going to eat that whole thing in a, in a week. Mm -mm. We, no. I mean, we're not, we might not even eat that whole thing in two weeks. Yeah. That's like three weeks of a side dish for us. How amazing is that? If you get yeah. 20 of those, you can make two weeks worth of side dishes. That's 40 weeks worth of side dishes. That is stretching every single dollar, every mm -hmm. single penny to the absolute maximum. Yeah, yeah. And let's talk about winter squash. Seeds are so easy to save. Yeah. You save your seeds, you replant those seeds next year. I mean, you can you can continue your production just off of what you have usually if you, you save the seeds. I mean, sometimes you might you might have some bad germination. You want another pack, you know, available. Just we in case. always get a couple extras, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not joking. I when I see butternut squash, I seriously throw like fifty into a thing because we we don't get huge germination rate from them. Um, but we got a lot this year. We got yeah. tons of them this year. And they grow. I've never really had a problem with them growing um, or trying to compete. I feel like going vertical for us has helped the most mm -hmm. in that case. Yeah. It, it, it might it might keep a lot of our squash from getting larger, per se. It does. I would but, say it does. But from a standpoint of production-wise, we probably come out probably about the same by the time you you see the amount of squash yeah i feel pretty good about it i'm okay um with it and how we do it and because I, I mean i've had success with it it's just really easy for me i will also say from a winter squash um from a frugality standpoint i don't know what your prices are in your area but right now the cheapest you get winter squash in <sighs> our area has been risen from what it used to be, which was probably in 2020, maybe 2021, it was 99 cents a pound. Yeah. That was about the cheapest you got, even at yeah. Thanksgiving. I don't care what anybody says, you wait till Thanksgiving, you wait till Christmas, it'll go down. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It never, ever went down. Mm -mm. Sweet potatoes will go down to 40 cents a pound in our area after Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's the cheapest. We will find them, but squash will not. Yeah, and, and now it's a dollar twenty nine a pound. A dollar twenty nine. Now you're looking at something that the like butternut squash is all meat at the top, all meat at the top, and that thing can be five pounds. You're gonna pay five dollars. I can buy a pack of seeds for that. A lot more. It's gonna be more than five dollars. <laughs> I would say that I mean, that's it. 
Oh, well, it would be six. It'd be six dollars. I can buy two packs of seeds for that. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's winter squash is if if you like them from a frugality standpoint, it is too expensive to buy them. Yes. You need to grow your own because you can come out way better and have more for the price you pay. Like acorn squashes, you don't get a lot of meat from. Um, we've not had a lot of success with spaghetti squashes. We like them. We like them. They're okay. We would much prefer other squashes personally to eat. We prefer the the meatier, sweeter, sweeter textures versus like the mushier textures of mm -hmm. squash. We don't really like that mushy. That that's one of the reasons the banana is kind of off putting for us. But we have found ways to make it palatable, yep. which is what matters. And it tastes good. It's just we have to use it in a different way. But they grow well and they can get very very big. Ours this year doesn't get as big, which is, I'm totally good with it. <laughs> I'm totally good with that. Uh, but we did get more. We yeah. got several more this year. Um, so we have the reasons why we grow it. We grow it because it grows well, storage, um, the amount of food you can get off of one, and it costs very good. Um, I would also say another reason why we feel we can grow it and come off better is because... For the most part, we have a very hands-off approach to gardening. So we're not using a lot of fertilizer to get these plants to grow. We fertilize one time after the initial planting. Our initial planting, all I did, I threw a little bit of rock dust, a little bit of activated charcoal, um, and Bi I- Biochar? Did you put biochar in That was it, biochar, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, biochar, just a small amount into the holes, and then a little bit of actual um, Dr. Earth. Dr. Like Brown. Organ no, not Dr. Brown. It was, uh, it, was, um, it, was, it was one of the organic fertilizers. Okay. So something like that, I'll, I'll let Aaron deal with that. He just hands me the bag I throw and go. <laughs> yeah. um, I throw it into the ground, and that's all we do. Yeah. That's really all we did. Put a little bit of fertilizer and fish emulsion on it a couple weeks after it started, and after that we not touched it. Mm -mm. Nothing. 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 This... The, the, go check out that video, like I said, just to see how much production we actually got this year. And, I mean, it's a lot. And, and I mean, we're talking winter squash right now, but at the same time, we are talking pumpkins as well. You know, this well, is... Well, winter this, squash, pumpkin is a winter squash. It, it is, but, you know, a lot of people might not know that. You yeah. know, it's in that category. But um, it was our first year for pumpkins. To actually come in. Yes. Um, First time we've ever had pumpkin. We've tried. Um, we were too late uh, on them last time. For the Cherokee tan. And, and then we also did them. The year before, it was in a bad area. We shouldn't have We shouldn't have done those. But days. it's worked great for the potatoes. Yes. It's worked wonderful for the potatoes. Like crazy good for the potatoes. Yeah. Um, which has worked out really well for us. Because potatoes for us have always been kind of hands off. We don't really, everything for us is hands off, but for potatoes, we don't need to monitor them every day. We kind of mm -hmm. just set them and forget them, um, let them do their thing. Then start, you know, getting into them when they're ready, you know. <laughs> Our squash require us to do a little bit more handholding because we do go vertical. So. Right, we have to tie them up, you know, some of them that's too heavy. We have to support them somehow, you know, stuff yeah. like that. We do have to do that type of perspective from them, you know, and weed those more often than not. I will say with our potatoes this year, we did try the, uh, grass. the grass and we put grass, you know, all around them and let them come up through the grass, you know, like where you mowed in the yard. And oh my gosh, we had no weeds in that section we tried it on. Zero. Aaron thought I was nuts yeah. for what to try this. He's like, this is so... He didn't tell me this. He didn't say it, but you could... I can always tell because it gets really quiet. And she's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Yeah. It was not a bad idea. <laughs> no, my dad even said, when would you weed eat the garden off after, after they died down? I said, I, I hadn't weed eated it yet. And he was like, well, there's no weeds up there. I was like, that's because of the grass you put down. <laughs> He said, we're going to do it in both gardens. Yeah, he said, we're going to let the grass get so high next year. You know, we do it in everywhere. <laughs> I was like, okay. 
<laughs> so we're going to be doing a lot of grass cover next year, which I'm okay with. Perfectly fine. I would say my only thing is I'd like it to be a little bit deeper, a little thicker. So we're going to have to work on that mm. next year. But we do have plans for that because this year was a test. Yeah. It was a test and it worked really well for us. So we're very, very happy with that. Um, it's harvest seeds. It's versatile and it tastes so good. I mean, we... God, it tastes so good. I cannot yeah. explain. Like, if you've never tried it, try it. And it's hard to find a lot of these varieties to try places. That That is one of the problems with winter squash is because if you're going to find anything, you're going to find butternuts, acorns, and spaghettis. Those are the three. Those Sometimes are... you'll find the, a few different varieties around October. They might not be completely edible. That's the other thing you have to be careful about because pumpkins have two varieties. Decorative. You have to be very careful if you're ordering seeds. Make sure you don't get the decorative pumpkins. You get the ones you're actually going to be able to eat. Right. Um, so, and you also, depending on what you're doing, you want to make sure that you can actually sustain it. If you don't have a way to process a two or three hundred pound pumpkin i probably wouldn't grow the pumpkins that get to be two or three hundred pounds yes um you can't do those vertical <laughs> you can't do those vertical we typically try to stay under 15 yes we look for smaller stuff we did talk about the blue hovers now we did do those you know but we do those and we know they have to be supported mm -hmm. like we absolutely know and we did have a few pumpkins that actually turned out to be bigger than they were supposed bigger to be. than they were supposed to like we're talking i've got two big old pumpkins that are yeah i mean they they're beautiful they're very very pretty um but they are much bigger than i was actually expecting them to be <laughs> yeah when I, I, when I kept seeing them grow and i was like are you sure this was a small one we put out? It was like only, I'm, I'm very careful, like five to ten um, pounds, like nothing more than 15. I always try to look. Now, the squashes I try to be careful with. Um, I, I, I try to be very careful because I want to make sure it's manageable. So, yeah. we're probably going to have to put a few more fence posts. Like one or we did find that out this year. We, we did, did have to put up a couple of extra fence posts. If you if you saw our video there to begin with, where we were putting the fence up uh, with the fence post supporting, we did have to go down the winter squash aisles and put up like two extra. two extra to three. I think we did three on the one where the blue hover down that row was. So we did have to put in a few extra fence posts to support it because all the weight of all the winter squash we were getting. And we didn't have it to begin with that much was because we didn't expect to have that type of harvest. We did not. Not at all. I mean, if we would have thought we were getting that much, we would have put 10 fence posts down through there. Yeah. We've never had a harvest like this. We've mm -hmm. had 15 at max, probably, total squash, which we felt good about. Like, to us, that's a great harvest. Y yeah. Like, we I, keep I mean, doing better and better. This year, I've got, like, 40. <laughs> 50. <laughs> Aaron's mm -hmm. like, I'm trying. Are you putting it a little low? <laughs> I think I am. I think I you am. are too. <laughs> it's actually probably closer to like 80. If anybody wants to go count that video, to let us know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's some underneath too. Yeah. And enjoy counting those teeny tiny little pumpkins. Um, now I will say there's some downsides to winter squash. There are a few downsides. Yes. So my number one downside <laughs> Is this, is this the one that you had this week, yes. this issue? This was this was a little scary to watch, I will say. I was like, we're going to lose a hand we're going to the emergency room. They can be very hard to process at certain ones. They can be, I, I'm doing this one. It's shaped like a pumpkin. It's a winter squash show. I, I know that's what it is. And my preference is to cut them down raw, um, but there are some you can't do that for this is one of those you can't. I could barely get it cut in half. She could barely get a knife in it. I could barely. And this is, I'm not using like paring knives. I'm using, this is how long the blade is trying to push this thing down. And it ain't going. It will not go through it. It took me two knives to get into this yeah. thing. Aaron's like freaking out. <laughs> And the, this wasn't a bad knife. This is a very good knife here. got mm -hmm. me for Christmas last yeah. year. It, it, it's just some of these are so... Hard. Hard. And, you know, that is sort of the point. You know, this one would have, you know, 
It would have stayed good for a long time. I, I wasn't thinking. I was just grabbing one because I needed to fill up trays. It was right there. And I had kind of pulled a lot of the ones that we had broken the tops off of that I knew we needed to eat. And I was trying to save one or two of the other ones for upcoming meals and upcoming meal prep. I was trying to save those. That was not a good good call from my end. It was not. And it's, and it's also was fatter. So typically your fatter ones aren't as meaty. Well, this one is. This one, like typically your fatter ones where they have seeds in them, you're going to have maybe a half an inch, sometimes an inch. This has like two inches of meat on the yeah. inside. It's huge compared to a lot of the others. I could bear, it took me what, an hour? I, I, for I, I, that's what I was about ready to say. I bet you spent an hour on that one squash trying to process it. And it filled up a full tray for the freeze dryer for a and medium, a bag. Medium sized freeze dryer tray. And a bag, a gallon bag. It's how much I had because I, I graded it and that tray was full. That tray was, you couldn't have gotten anything else in the tray. So they're very, very hard to process. Um, certain ones like butternut squash if you if you've ever cut one or peeled one you know they could be a bit of a bear um i think a lot of times for some of these it really is easier just to bake them in the oven depending on how you want to process um and then just take them out scoop them in dehydrate freeze dry whatever you're thinking mm. to make powders and i'll be doing some of that for um pies and pie mix and also muffins and oatmeal and oatmeal cookies and pumpkin cookies and all of those things. Mm, all those sounds so good. <laughs> I'm like, when are we start? We got a lot to do before the end. I, know. I, know. I got a whole thing of pears we got to process first. Um, pumpkin chocolate chip cookies, things like that. If you have any great squash pumpkin recipes you want to share, leave those in the comments on YouTube, send me an email. I'm happy to try those out because I'm all about pumpkin and squash. Like it's mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Um, another thing, they have a very long season. It is yes. not like your summer squash, which is like that. You turn around and, oh, look, I have, I have, I have summer squash. Like it's not like that. Yeah, no, uh, most winter squash are at you know a little bit below or a little bit more around the 100 day mark at least at least yeah. you're going to go anywhere from 90 some days to, to 120 100, 130 130 days yeah, 130. depending upon the varieties and sometimes even longer than that and that's from germination so you have to kind of understand how that works from when your seed actually your plant actually starts to grow so typically it's going to be a longer season um so it means it's a lot of garden space it's going to take up and that's the other thing if you're not going vertical and you're growing super heavy things like really big yeah. pumpkins it's going to take up a lot of space now if you have the space it's perfectly fine you're you know, fine but if you don't it, it, it is it is harder to take up half your garden just for winter squash I mean, we've done it we have done we it have. we had a little area we had set aside, we put the blue hubbards there the very first year we grew them. And they grew, we got some good ones mm -hmm. when we first tried it. And, but man, managing and maintaining, that was the thing, maintaining, cause they will go. And even going vertical, maintaining those vines. Blue hubbard vines go Wherever crazy. they want. Crazy, yes. They're probably one of the uh, most prolific growing vines that I've ever seen from a squash. It's terrible germination rate. Terrible germination. Terrible. Like we've been growing, like we've only had success growing them twice. But once you can get them, mm -hmm. they're amazing. Um, but their germination rate's like below 50%. I'm yeah. wanting to say that's how bad it is. So we'll save seeds from the Blue Hubbard. Without a doubt, we'll save the seeds. Um, all and, of them and probably. And we'll probably, we'll probably buy a couple packs. We'll probably just to have you know in case one or the other doesn't work so because i'm even wanting to increase our winter squash winter squash production even more my goal this year was to actually set up our hen pen in an area where we thought it would work well we didn't get to that this year there was a lot of goitum we still had a wonderful harvest yeah. but we will not complain we have we have gotten a great abundant harvest and we are so thankful for but next year i'm really hoping that i can 
extend and create, you know, a, new space. create a new space for this with that that hen pen to where I don't have to worry about deer or anything like that getting into it and put it somewhere else on our property and it's more movable more flexible and it kind of gives me a way to like grow a whole bunch more um butternut or blue hubbards that you know if we have 150 seeds I could throw half of them here and yeah. half of them there with a blue hubbard you're lucky if you get yeah any I mean like a third of the germination but. from them you have to try one. You do. You have to try one. They are very unique. They have a. They say nutty, and yes, that that's mm-hmm. a very good way to describe. They are. They do have a very nutty flavor and a very nice flavor. Um, I would say it's not one like I would want to eat straight by itself. Like I wouldn't eat it mashed. Um, but I find most squashes taste better. Now this is a hack. <laughs> this is a hack. Most squashes, winter squashes, taste better if you mash them with sweet potatoes. Yep. It adds something to the sweet potato, and the sweet potato adds something to the squash. The texture becomes amazing because if you get like a butternut, a blue hubbard, they have like a richer, thicker texture to them versus something like a trumpetino or anything, like that, which is kind of a little bit more mushy, um, not as thick of a texture to it. And then mix out with the sweet potato texture. It's amazing. It tastes so good. Like, yeah. you've never had anything like it. I would definitely try. I would say in my future, I'm going to have a sweet potato winter squash pie. And I will do a video on that because that is one of our... We love sweet potatoes. We love winter squashes. And I've always just mixed them together. It's always been great. Oh, yeah. And they work so well together. And I, I, think, I think people underestimate the... The potential of a winter squash. There, there's so much you can do with them from a culinary perspective. Well, even that and how much you can get from them, that they don't make that a big focus in their garden, which is uh, one of the reasons we do. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is is the commercial aspect of fall and Thanksgiving. And they, you want the pretty stuff. <laughs> outside so people can look at well you know these came from varieties that were edible mostly you know they're still beautiful yeah but they're, they're not, not edible <laughs> well no i was talking about the winter squash. oh okay <laughs> they're still beautiful you see our pretty they pictures are. they're beautiful and they taste wonderful um it's just i feel like people look at them and there's like well it's just a squash it's just a squash or it's not as important as some of these other things in our garden it just feels like they're undervalued people forgotten how important these were to most of our ancestors i was watching another youtube video and they were doing um like a grocery audit or something for this lady and she opened her freezer and she had butternut squash she had frozen she's like i don't know what to do with it i think it's my chickens what eat it <laughs> it's very easy eat it make a soup make muffins, make bread. You could do so much with this. And it's just one of those things where you're just kind of like, okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just a different. And I think and when I saw all that, I heard it. I was like, wow, you know, I don't think, I think it's underestimated how, how much these can enrich your life. If you put a little bit of energy and focus into them, if you are able to, again, you don't have to have a huge garden space to do it. And there's so many different varieties. That's it. So, I mean, you know, we've talked about the Blue Hubbard. We've talked about butternuts. A lot of these came from, um, they say, probably, you know, Central South America type of aspect. But you have all the varieties that came from Japan. The the Black Futsu. There is a lot over that way. Like this big. Yes. And it's very good. It's mm-hmm. very similar to a Blue Hubbard. We grew these little honey. Honeydews. Hun- no, they weren't honeydews. They were. Um, honey hun- nuts. Honey nut. Yes, mm-hmm. honey nut. No, honeydews are bailing. <laughs> so hey, at least, they, at least I was, you know. <laughs> they looked garden. like a like a, a miniature butternut. They were, mm-hmm. But they would get like this big. 
and yeah, you very, could grow those vertical all day long yeah. and they were very good um not very hard to process not very hard to work through the smaller ones tend to be on the easier side to deal with um if that's your other concern but they were very tasty mm -hmm. uh, we didn't grow them anymore because for us it wasn't enough for us personally um to deal with them yeah. we prefer a medium size squash yeah but we do have a few large varieties in the form of the blue hubbard um the trumpachinos grow long so the bananas the bananas can grow wide we we and, and you know with all this if you look at some video you'll see a lot of cross pollination yes. and, and that's how a lot of these have started you know in the past is, and that's okay it's perfectly fine it adds different flavors to it gives you something extra perfectly fine that banana was actually cross pollinated, yeah. and we it, it was it was beautiful to look at. Oh yeah, it was, was striped, so was so we so think pretty. it might have crossed with one of the kushals because it was next to it, mm. um, and we're okay with that. And you have to be well. It, it just depends. Do you just want to grow one variety? Do you want to grow multiples? We want multiples because we like that variety yeah. and we want to try to see which ones grow the best for us so trumpachinos we will definitely be dedicating space to again blue hubbard same black bootsies we didn't get i think maybe one this year but we'll still try again next yeah. year because we have had success and we do like them we've had very good success with black foods before this green thing i don't know what it is but it's crazy i will grow again despite the fact that i hate managing it we're just gonna have to find a different way for it to be cut <laughs> we'll get the chainsaw out, yeah. something <laughs> i don't know if the chainsaw would have been through it it was so hard um but it just i feel like they're under underutilized and underestimated undervalued they, undervalued and they except are, by people who try to sell them at the grocery stores and uh, that's nuts you have no idea what they put on them or anything these were not the organic certified organic squash dollars you know prices i'm giving yeah. you this is the regular grocery store <laughs> so god only knows what they're using to spray on them and put on them yeah. but it works really well i will say if you go vertical you do have to watch they will grow through your fencing i have a few i'm gonna have to get up there whenever i'm ready to start baking and cut off and put in the oven immediately yeah yeah we've got a few we need to get off there in the next week or two yeah, but it works really well so i would say winter squash for us is it seems silly and we talk about it all the time but for us it's a staple it is a staple in this household and and for me it was sort of growing up we always had kushals and butternuts we didn't. We didn't. Mom, we, I ate a butternut when I was, I can't remember when mom first made it. And that's when she made the roasted ones. And I fell in love with that mixture. Um, minus some of the things she put in. And then I introduced it to Aaron. And yeah. Yeah. If you I know. had one of them with my peanut butter balls, I probably would have yeah. sealed the deal. Yeah. I was just used to, you know, putting it in the oven, cutting into it with a little bit of sugar. Yep. So, Really versatile, really a lot, so many uses. Why we put such a, a focus on our garden. We wanted to go over why we feel it's such a valuable crop. Yeah. And if you haven't added it to not just look at, you know, if you like a butter to look out there. There's so many out there. And I would say look at like, like Baker Creek, um, other seed stores for varieties that are going to work for you. Yeah, and most of them have you know what they think it tastes like and then read in the comments below from people's reviews what they say it tastes like because you might find some that people say are nutty and then in the comments that other people don't think it tastes nutty so that so, so look at look at those type of things to see which you know might be some of the flavors you would enjoy i say delectica is one of the lightest mm -hmm. and nicest mm -hmm. um winter squashes i have ever had it almost reminds you of a summer squash mm -hmm. with its taste and texture um but we again we tend to focus more on the meatier aspects yep. of them that's what we tend to like the best and what we tend to to gravitate towards just from a standpoint of how much can i get for the amount of work we're putting into it yeah so final thought Make sure you try winter squash in your garden next year. Whether it's, it. <laughs> whether it's yeah, just a small little corner that you're trying one or two, 
you know, or if you're dedicating a whole row to it of blue hubbards. <laughs> probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably take them the whole garden. <laughs> It'll take them the whole garden. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Unless you're going to like, I don't even know if you fence it off. <laughs> we keep those yeah. things contained. Make, make sure it can grow up a fence. <laughs> um, I would say for me, it would be to just, if you're willing to try them and really look at the different varieties, there are really kind of find something that's going to work for you. You don't have to go as in depth in multiple varieties or be as focused as we are on this aspect, but it is a very valuable crop to have in your garden. And it is one that, you know, it, it does seem very undervalued. Um, a lot of people put a lot more energy towards a lot of other crops in their garden. Um, and for us, this one doesn't take a lot of time. I probably spent, what, 10 hours tying defenses? Probably. Maybe 15 total for the season. Um, I feel like that's pretty good. Definitely. Definitely. For what we're getting. Yeah. Make sure you check that video just to see the harvest. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if you got anything you want to comment wise or... You know, if you want to hear us talk about in a future episode, send that over to thecannycouple at yahoo.com. Make sure to go over and check out our link tree, which has our links to all of our social media that we're on. And make sure to give us a follow on those. And, yeah. As always, thank you for joining us on Rural Reliance with the Candy Couple, where we work hard, live simple, and enjoy life. Have a wonderful day.